Um, oh, uh, lip balm. Nearly forgot lip balm. This is a this is a David Beckham lip balm. Uh, lip balm, lip balm, some lip balm, lip balm, strawberry, lip balm, and yep, lip balm. I actually have no idea why I've got so much lip balm. I mean, I'm married now, so I'm I'm rarely kissed. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a video sponsored by Lumix. And uh, if you're watching this video in the first week that I've put it up. Uh, I shall be in the French or the Swiss Alps doing a commercial job in the cold. If you're watching this video in the second week that's gone live, I'll be in Iceland uh, hosting a workshop with Nigel Danson. So I've got a couple of very cold weeks ahead of me and I thought what I'd do is go through some of the, uh, the cold weather gear that I take that helps me make photos in, uh, in those conditions. Nobody has asked for this video, but since I'm packing for the next couple of weeks, I thought I'd thought I'd give it a go. So hopefully some of you find it useful. Uh, right then, where to begin? I shall start from the ground up. So with these, these are yak tracks, they're called. And basically they're, um, they're kind of like mini crampons, but crampons that you can walk down the road in. So if you're on like an icy road and uh, you're a bit nervous about walking around in your walking boots or whatever you've got on your feet, you can use these, which are essentially coils wrapped around rubber to hook onto your shoe. And uh, they do a brilliant job of just giving you more stability in ice. And you can wear them. I'm just gonna stop talking a minute because this one seems a bit broken, unless it's inside out. That would be a concern. Yes, there we go. So yeah, you put that on the bottom of your shoe and uh, you can walk on ice basically. And they're a lot more um, town friendly than uh, crampons. So yeah, I use these to, um, I think actually that might be inside out. What am I? Don't know, but uh, everywhere snowy that I went last year, I use these and uh, so long as they're not inside out, they do a great job of making sure you don't fall over. We fall over less. Um, slightly higher than those, as in in your walking boot, I use these, which are uh, sheepskin insoles. Now don't laugh at me, I know it sounds a bit odd, but my feet get cold quite easily, and I use these to try and protect my feet from the, uh, the icy ground. Now I could, of course, use snow boots or something, but they take up a lot of room in my bag, which is already quite full of all this other stuff and lots of photography gear. So I, um, I decided to get these, and therefore I can use my walking boots to travel in the airport and stuff, and I can just put these in when I get to the cold place. And then I'm not having to take a whole nother pair of shoes, big shoes at that, just for um, the cold conditions. So yeah, these work very well. They're super cheap. I got these on Amazon and uh, yeah, they do the job nicely. Also really soft. Um, just above my sheepskin insoles, I usually wear socks. So unconventional or what? Now I usually use merino wool socks, for example, but I also on wet days or particularly icy days or slushy days, days where I'm likely to get water in my boots, my waterproof boots, I like to also wear waterproof socks. These ones are from Seal Skins and they're brilliant for, um, well, as you'd expect, when you get water in your boots. If you like walk into a puddle or some slush, you get icy water in your boot. No waterproof boot is gonna save that. And uh, having these just means that your feet stay dry. Uh, so yeah, these are brilliant. I'd really recommend them. You can obviously use gaiters as well to make sure that water doesn't get in your boots. But if somehow water does get in your boots, then I've found these to be uh, quite effective. Um, legs, so I typically use merino wool leggings to, uh, to keep my legs nice and warm. And over the top of those, my favorite trousers or pants, if you're stateside, are these. These are Fuel Raven something or other. I'll put a link in the description. They're painfully expensive, but they do a brilliant job of uh, keeping you warm, keeping you mobile, and uh, they're super strong and can basically take any amounts of abuse I've found. So uh, yeah, I'd, I'd really recommend these whatever they're called. I've just seen that the label says women's. Interesting. Uh, now on my top half, I like to wear men's clothes typically, and I use merino wool base layers. Again, this is from a company called Icebreaker. I think that's the company. And uh, this is a Merino 200. And uh, I find those to be brilliant. On top of those, I normally wear a t-shirt and then I'll wear a mid layer, something like this, like a hoodie that's sort of fleecy or something like that. And then there are a whole host of options. So you can go gilet, something like that, or big massive down or synthetic jacket, 
like that. Uh, I've got a few of these different thicknesses. One thing to bear in mind is that synthetic uh, jackets will keep their warmth even when they're wet, whereas when down is wet, it won't keep its warmth. So uh, if you live in a wet place or you're going to wet places, synthetic jackets typically are better, I find. And then if it's windy or rainy, I mean in really cold places it's rarely rainy, so often if it's windy, I'll use a waterproof, which I find is just as good at blocking wind as it is blocking water. So that will be my uh, my final layer on top. The key with photography I find in cold places is layering because when you're taking photos a lot of the time you'll hike up to somewhere to take photos and you'll be really really warm because you've been hiking uphill and you'll want to strip off but then when you get to the place you'll spend half an hour trying to find photos to take and uh, you'll get freezing in that time. So your body temperature will be up and down all the time even if the air temperature stays the same. So layering allows you to adjust your um, layers, obviously. And uh, if you've just got one huge jacket on with a t-shirt underneath, you might be warm enough, but then if you get too warm, you've got limited options. So layers is definitely the way to go. Oh, and I've also got some waterproof trousers that I, um, I either use for waterproofing or again, windproofing. I'm just gonna check to see if these are men's. I use a buff around my neck, which is like a long scarf basically that you stick your head through. And uh, you can use this to kind of pull up over your lips if you've run out of lip balm or just as a normal scarf, really. There's not a whole lot more to say about that, but they are they are very good. Uh, and woolly hat goes without saying, to be honest, but um, yeah, woolly hat is, is a sensible thing to wear on your head. I do have a waterproof woolly hat as well from the same company that makes these waterproof socks, seal skins. I don't know where it is. And also I don't really worry about taking that to really cold places because, well, it doesn't really rain all that much in cold places. And I mean, it, it could be useful for snow, I guess. But, uh, but yeah, I don't know where it is. Um, gloves. So whenever I can get away with it, i.e. when I'm out for, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, and I've just jumped out of the car to take a photo maybe, I'll, uh, I'll wear these, these super thin Alp kit gloves. And the reason I like these so much is that it's super easy to uh, operate a camera with these on. It's basically just exactly the same as, as not having gloves on. Obviously they're thin though, so they don't do a great job in really, really extreme cold or if you're out for a long period of time. So in that instance, I'll probably go to something like this. Again, seal skin's a bit thin a bit more insulated, waterproof, and uh, these are pretty much my go-to gloves all the time. And sometimes when it's really cold, I'll put these on, then these, and I'm still able to operate my G9 because, uh, well, partly because it's such a good camera in terms of its ergonomics. So um, yeah, that's a good combination. If it's even colder than that, and I'm not taking photos all the time, then I'll go to something like this, a, uh, a proper mountain snow expedition type job. Um, now, I've found when I'm wearing gloves all the time that it's much easier to check the time wearing a watch than it is to have to take your big thick gloves off and try and get hold of your phone. So I wear a cheap watch that um, tells the time, basically. This is still the one that I found in the sea in Sri Lanka almost a year ago, and it's absolutely fine. Um, also, walkie-talkies. So these are also great when you've got gloves on and don't want to phone someone, don't want to deal with the touch screen. And a lot of the time, really cold places are also really remote places. So the chances of two people having a really good cell signal, or phone signal, sorry, I went all American then, don't know why I said cell signal. Chances of that are remote, I would say. So uh, having these is, is handy. Travel adapters, obviously, for very, very obvious reasons. I like these ones, which are multi travel adapters for kind of all around the world. And I like these ones because they've also got USB ports, which I find really handy. So I've got a couple of these. These come with me everywhere, not just cold places. They're only out really because I'm packing. They've got absolutely nothing to do with cold weather. So I don't really know why they're on the table, but never mind. And finally, sunglasses, because as you know, cold places are often snowy. Snow is very bright. So sunglasses are essential. I can't currently find my sunglasses. So I'll, uh, I'll demonstrate with my ski goggles. Good. Oh, and of course, finally, probably most importantly, is uh, my camera, this G9, which I take everywhere with me. I've had it for the best part of two years now, it's barely got a scratch on it, and uh, well, I abuse it, to be honest. Every time I go away, particularly to cold places, and I'm with other people that shoot with other systems, they can't really believe how I treat this as a mirrorless camera. Like, I'll throw it in the snow and get something out of my bag if I need to, and uh, yeah, people who use other mirrorless systems basically look at me like I've just spat at them.
when I do things like that with this camera, but it's, I'm convinced it's bulletproof, so it doesn't really matter. And when you're in cold conditions, brutal conditions, having a camera that you trust implicitly in those conditions is um, super important. So yeah, I'm still super happy with it. And thank you Lumix for your continued support. So yeah, that's that. Hopefully you, uh, you found this interesting or useful. And uh, next time I'll be coming to you from France or Switzerland, hopefully with uh, a video from there. And I'll have wonderful lips. <laughs>